Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the Bighorn by OMP Hobby. Hey guys, I finally got my hand on an OMP Bighorn. I'll tell you what, this airplane goes in and out of stock quite a bit. I finally got my hands on one. I got the green version and this was the plug and play. They also have like an ARF version that you install your own electronics. This is a full plug and play. So the motor, servos, everything came installed. The ESC even came installed. All I had to do was some very basic work. And I'll tell you what, for a plug and play kit, this thing went together more like a foam plane than a balsa plane. Let me explain. Okay, for starters, all of the servos were installed, all the arms were installed on the servos, and all the control horns were installed, and all the balls were installed. All you had to do to connect the servo to the wing or the flap is to install the linkage connector, and that was it. So that was probably one of the longest parts of the entire assembly. You can't really call this one a build because it literally is an assembly. Uh, everything was already glued in. The flaps were pre-hinged, the ailerons were pre-hinged. The covering looked spectacular out of the gate. The wheels were installed on the gear. The only thing I had to do is install the gear itself on the airframe. And they even had the screws sitting in the holes waiting to accept the landing gear. And they did jobs that you normally have to do on a traditional ARF, such as installing the flaps and cutting the hinges in and gluing it in, and then installing the control horn and the ball links and everything else. Those are all things that were taken care of. The motor was even installed and the spinner was sitting on the prop shaft waiting for the prop. So it was a very simple assembly. Even the horizontal stabilizer was very easy to install because they removed the shrink covering and it's keyed. So all you had to do was slide it in and make sure you had a parallel distance between the tip of your horizontal stabilizer and the tip of the wing out there, that's it. And in my case, it was perfect. So no need for adjustment there. And the, uh, even the elevator was hinged and glued. And then as far as the rudder goes, that one obviously had to be glued in. That was the one, like one of the few bits of CA you had to do on this model. The hinges were already glued into the rudder side. So all you have to do is slide it into the vertical stabilizer, drop a little CA in there and you're done. The tail wheel assembly was complete. It was installed. The only thing I had to do is put that one little screw in on the rudder and that was it. All right, let's take a look up front. Under the canopy, this pops off and they have some very strong magnets in there. So be careful. You might wanna put some tape on there to give yourself a pull strap to avoid cracking or putting pressure on this windscreen. I will be adding tape to mine because I don't really wanna pull on that. The magnets are really strong and they're glued in there securely. No issues there. This plane flies with a three cell 2200 and with that battery in place, the CG is about 60 millimeters and it balanced perfectly right on the mark. So I think it's 58 to 66 millimeters. I have mine set at 60 and it balanced right on the marks perfectly with the stock setup. No weight required, no adjustments required. As far as the top of the wings go, they have a very nice canopy with a metal pull tab on it. And again, really strong magnets. Those magnets are on there, man. I'll tell you what, nice job on those magnets. Anyway, inside, that's where the receiver goes. I'm flying with an S6R. This is also where you have a thumb nut to secure the wing to the airframe. And that's also where the wires for the wings obviously come in. I can tell you that this is a really elegant and simple design. It's very clean. They've got a carbon fiber wing spar up here. And there's even some carbon fiber reinforcement plates right there where the wings meet the fuselage. So this entire compartment is about as easy as you can make it. You guys hear me talk about this all the time. When you fly electric planes, especially where I live where it's hot, you gotta have ventilation. So they built egress ventilation here with a nice plastic cover on the bottom of the fuselage. And then up front, you can see in the cowl, there's some nice vent air intakes for ventilation right up front. I do want to point out that the way they arrange the flaps on this one is that they have the arms going opposite directions. So what that means is that the flaps, if you put them on a Y as is traditional with flaps, you wind up with the aileron effect. So the flaps will go in opposite directions. The way I solved that was by putting the flaps on their own channel. Unfortunately, that means the ailerons had to be on a Y. So I couldn't use the ailerons on their own channel because I'm limited to a six channel receiver. If you want to do discrete aileron channels and flap channels, you'll need an eight channel receiver. So that would be four channels, one for each aileron and one for each flap, one, two, three, four, then two in the back, that's five, six, and of course you need throttle, that's seven. The control surfaces on this thing are like barn doors. So I didn't really realize it when I got this plane, I thought it was just more of a traditional 
a uh, high wing plane, but if you look at it, the flaps, those things are huge. They're, they're huge flaps and the ailerons too. They've got quite a bit of deflection. So this plane obviously has some 3D capabilities. We'll see when we fly it, but I can tell you right now, it looks like it's got plenty of control throw. Regarding fit and finish, it is excellent on this airplane. I told you in the opener that the cameras just do not do this green any justice, but when I open this up, the bright green, it just pops. It's one of the brightest greens I think I've ever seen on a model airplane. Not only is the finish color awesome, but they really did a nice job with the, with the shrink covering because there were no wrinkles on it. I didn't see any unsightly seams or gaps or uneven cuts. Everything just came together flawlessly. And when you look at little details, like I wanna show you one that I, that I pay attention to, is the alignment of the cowl onto the graphics on the fuselage. And you can see right here how nicely those graphics line up. They really did an excellent job paying attention to detail on this PNP or ARF kit. It comes together beautifully. The other thing they even did was they painted the nose cone to match the body. It is a yellow nose cone under there, so they've got some color match paint, and they painted it to match the cowl. I'll get into the specs in just a minute, but this is a sunny sky prop, and it's blue, so it kind of goes with the rest of the color scheme, which is green and blue. If you follow the channel, you know I just did that review on the Nexa L4 Cub Grasshopper, and I pointed out that in the wing, there is a gap in between the fuselage and the wing itself. Not on this one. On this one, it came together really tight. It helps that the screws went in the side and they help pull the wing into the fuselage, and that's what they do on the Bighorn, but that's what I'm talking about. That's a fit and finish thing. When you look at this, there is no gap. You see the line where they meet, but that's it. There's no, there is no light behind there. You can't see my hand on the backside. So as you look at this aircraft, the fit and finish all over the place is very good from the, where the wing meets the fuselage to this top hatch to where the canopy attaches. The lines are straight and clean. There are no gaps. Cowl up front is aligned perfectly and the screws are even set right so they're not bending the plastic. It just lines up perfectly and you don't even see those indentations you get when you over tighten the cowl. So they did everything fit and finish wise very, very well on this plane. Let's get into the specifications on this plane and then we'll wrap this video up. The wingspan is 49 inches. The motor is a Sunny Sky 2820 1100 kV, and you guys know I love Sunny Sky motors, so two thumbs up on that. The propeller is what's called a Sunny Sky Eolo. I've never heard of them before, but apparently Sunny Sky has props too. This one is a 12 by 65 electric prop. The ESC is a 40 amp. Now, on the OMP website, they recommend a ZTW 40 amp, and I'm a big fan of ZTW ESCs. I did not take the cowl off to verify that's what they used, but that's what they recommend on their website if you buy it in the non-PMP form, is the ZTW 40 amp ESC. In this particular model, there are six servos. They're 17 gram OMP Hobby Metal Gear digital servos, and this one, of course, uses six servos because you've got one servo for each flap one servo for each aileron, and then the two in the back for the rudder and the elevator. The flying weight on this one is 1,365 to 1,410 grams. Again, it uses a three cell 2,200 to 3,000 milliamp hour battery, and they predict a flight time of five to 12 minutes. I might try a little bit of a bigger three cell. I'll see what I've got in my stash. I'm not sure if I've got a three cell 3,000 or not, but if I do, I might try that out because the plane certainly looks like it has room for it. I don't think that's going to be a problem. I was really impressed with the level of finish on this plane from the factory. They did a great job taking care of the minor details and they leave just a few minor assembly bits for you. I can tell you that I took a picture when I took it out of the box and posted it on Discord. And when I was finished, I looked at the timestamp of that picture and it took me under two hours to completely finish this plane, including setting up the radio and all the servo directions and all of that stuff. So two thumbs up for me so far. I really like the look of this plane. I think the shrink covering quality is excellent. I love the green and blue color scheme. It looks really good. I know it's gonna pop in the air. So the only thing left to do is fly it. Keep an eye on the channel and I'll get the Bighorn out to the field and get it up in the air just as soon as I can. Hey, if you like this kind of material, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down there in the corner. That way you'll know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.